Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this episode, we're jumping in the cab with Ernie as we take a trip through Bedford Falls and visit with the perennial holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Dean Legiro here. Happy holidays, Eric. Hello, hello. And hello, to you, hello. sir. Yes. Yeah. This is a very well, special episode. Special yep. episode. Yep. Before we get to the episode, you've got to visit us on social media. We're at 3324 mm -hmm. Podcast on Instagram, and we have to do the advertising early and often. I mean, that's like, is <laughs> yeah. that like marketing 101? It's kind of like, you know, get yeah, the product gets, out in front of everybody's face. So we, we have to do that. Of course. We it gets a little uh, we, we social media. I hope it doesn't get too redundant, but it just, no, it's got to be done, right? We got to get it out there. So right. we'll, you know, you know, we, will do, we will do a silent episode where we make no <laughs> mentions of, of social media. Well, you know what? I'm, I mean, it's in, it's in the intros anyway, but I think people like to hear it. I think they of like course. to hear it from us as well. That, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not some person that we paid saying it, which they are, but we, right. we feel it as well too. So right. all this leads to check us out on Instagram and Facebook at 3324 podcast and, and Twitter at 3324p p and the yes. reason why we're so passionate about that is because we've got a really vibrant community there we've got a lot yeah. of people that share posts they, they they share different things that connect to them with within the music and movie realm so it's such a great mm -hmm. vibrant community that we invite you to join us there and and membership has its privileges because then you'll you'll know when we go live every other week we do that on facebook and and youtube so it's a lot of fun there so it's a little bonus besides the audio uh, presentation. You, you can get the, the internet presentation and the video presentation. Absolutely. And we got a lot of great, great people, a lot yeah. of talented people, people who like show such an interest and in, in a passion for this kind of thing. Oh, stop talking you know, about but... me in front of me. Why are you giving me such compliments like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Oh, I got you, a few you, things to say about you. No, you, you, no, you got to no. drag me from the spotlight with my teeth still in the spotlight. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like it was, one of, it was like one of those cartoons where, you know, they, they pull all everything but the the, the, the outline of, of the figure with the teeth yep. and just the eyeballs to, like in midair. <laughs> That's like, it. That's me. It's like, you know, yeah, I'll take the spotlight. Is. So we are we are talking about a certified holiday classic. Yeah, uh, it's a wonderful life. So let's do the the statistical information about this. Um, mm -hmm. Not too much. I mean, it, it, this this movie actually has a, a strange pedigree for something that's so beloved. But it was released in December of 1946, directed by Frank Capra. Mm -hmm. uh, a roll through the main players, or the ones I think are the main players, or ones that I you know, James Stewart, of course, Donna Reed, uh, Lionel Barrymore, Henry mm -hmm. Travers, Thomas Mitchell, Ward Bond. Who's making his second yeah. podcast appearance with us? Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> that's right. And, and Sheldon <laughs> Leonard. Yes. So uh, this had a budget of. Uh, we're going to get into decimal points here because I think it's important. It had a budget of three point one eight million dollars. Yeah. And it made back three point three million, so it just squeaked over. So that tells you that this was not a a runaway hit at the time by any means. Right. Um, based on a and short story by Philip Van Doren Stern, I've got I've got one more statistic for you. Okay. Uh, it did win an Academy Award. Yeah, for it won an Academy Award for technical achievement for developing a new method of simulating snow. 
<laughs> that's the Academy Award it won. Well, I'm, I'm glad it did because that, that's one of the most striking things about the film, right? Is that, yeah. You know, is that it, it, it's they the wettest snow you're ever going to see. It, it's, it, it's, they it's, pioneered it's, some snow technology <laughs> on this too because before, yeah. before they came up with this, whatever it was, they actually used to use dry cornflakes for yeah. snow because it mm-hmm. looked like snow. But the problem was when obviously when people walked on it, it would crunch so then they would have to redub, you know, they would have to redub all the dialogue in post. Yeah. Yeah. So you could get the 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 snowy looking thing, but you'd be basically getting, you know, they're a great crunch <laughs> uh, on the ground. And, and you know. <laughs> this well, if, if this if this uh, this snow in some in some cases, I mean it looks uh right before we started we were ta- i was just talking you know re- talking about the 4k restoration of, of uh-huh. the film which is its 75th anniversary this year and I, I i just bought it and and i watched it and so yeah you know there are some scenes where things are too too clear mm-hmm. so in these in the in, in these particular scenes the snow if you could argue that they, they poured a lot of milk on over these <laughs> cornflakes because it's really mushy and really wet and it's well, like, it, new it, technology, it like yeah. it looks like it looks like soap in some in, in, in they a lot actually of use soap. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah that so. was the thing is they got away from the, the, the cornflakes because you it would, it would ruin the, your audio. So the, the mm-hmm. Academy Award was for pioneering uh, realistic looking snow that you could use in a film. And and yeah. you see, you know, in those later scenes, those are some big flakes that are coming down. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, at the end of the film, it really is, is really the only time you see snow. So it's like, it's like, what part of the world does it snow like this? <laughs> you yeah, know, like big this flake. Is, well, yeah, sometimes yeah, when crazy. you're a kid, you would see those big, of course, get those it's snows. effective. Yeah. Like the, no you doubt. would see those giant flakes that would come down as like, yeah. oh my God, you know, imagine if this was rain, it would be like poor, it would be like a monsoon. I, but well, that's what I always so assumed that it, it was raining at the same time, you know, that really wet snow where yeah. it's like, it's kind of coming down. I would, I always, I always remarked about. Boy, it sucks to be that guy driving the truck over the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> and you're driving around in that in that weather. Yeah, it just looks like you slush. Know? Like you're gonna slide <laughs> yeah, right off yeah. that bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good thing it's not a drawbridge. You'd go right over. So yeah, the film. Uh, um, yeah, it, it squeaked by, like you mentioned, but it was also uh, it was also divided. You know, the critics were not. So a lot of critics were not sold on it. I don't know why uh, uh, at that at that point in time, but. Um, yeah, and and surprising because you know, it's a post it's a it's a post war film. It was yeah, yeah. Um, it was Frank Capra's first post war film because he had done a lot of films before World War II, and and his stuff was known for that every man type of thing. Yeah. Meet John Doe and and Mister Smith goes to Washington. So he had that kind of style, and then World War II breaks out, and the government asks him to make a series of films, uh, a series called Why We Fight. Mm-hmm. And it was it was for the military personnel, and they wanted it to be as factual as possible about what yeah. was going on in Europe, and and so people could get an understanding of what was happening overseas. So he did that whole series, and this was his first film back. Likewise, this was uh, James Stewart's first film because right. he had served yep. in World War II. Also, mm-hmm. he had enlisted, so it was both. So you would think that post war you would want this kind of a film, this kind of. Uh, I can't say it's a feel good film, honestly. No. 99% no. of this film is dark. And we will, yeah, we will talk about, it. we'll get to that, but it's, it's like, it yeah. It's dark. Um, no, I, it, it, I think the thing it, it is, is like, and he's known, uh, he's, he's affectionately known, his films are known uh, as Capricorn. Yep. His, uh, it's, it's Capra this, dash corn. Right. It's this, it's this, <laughs> you know, there's overtly sentiment to his movies that are yeah. right on the cusp of, of them being, uh, extremely sentimental and, and like kind of cringy at times, very sort of like gleeful and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, the it's like you say, when you, you, type of characters. Well, you, well you, know? you get to the you get to those moments though when it's just you know everything's all fine and you know but then something happens and it's like the, the your protagonist in the movie goes to some kind of personal hell. <laughs> yeah, in in all his films, really, the, you know, all all his characters you know, they go through something, you know, some kind of personal turmoil. And and then and then of course you, you you get those happy endings and they're well earned, well deserved, especially for the audience. At that yeah. point, you 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 want to see this guy win, you know, or 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 him get whatever the goal is made. Or I, I could understand audiences at the time not yeah not getting it because he, even though it was released in December of forty six, it was not marketed as a Christmas film, and it's not honestly 
it's not really a Christmas film. It right. is not you about watch this Christmas. Any time of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You you, mm-hmm. you can, but everything culminates to really it, it everything culminates to Christmas though. So you you get this whole film that's really not about it. Yeah. But then at the end, it ends up encap- like it ends up being about the whole spirit of Christmas, like in the last basically the not even the last act, but the last half. Sure. The last quarter yeah. of the last act, really. Um, so is is you know I could understand where audiences probably didn't get or were a little perplexed about well what you know what's you know what is this um, and it's just one of those ones that and and it went away for a while it yeah. it, dis- it disappeared into the ether and, and didn't really do much and then through some weird circumstances uh, the copyright or, or the you know elapsed on it I mean it elapsed you know when it went it went into the public domain and what that means. Is that uh, TV stations didn't have to pay a royalty, although they ended up having to pay a royalty b- based on the original, you know, short story. Mm-hmm. But the film rights lapsed, so TV stations just started playing it because they didn't have to pay a royalty fee. So it almost kind of got a second life because of the copyright issue. If if someone if if stations had to pay for it, they might not have paid for this film. But because it was something that you could pay, you could play, and not have to worry about. You could just trot it out. And that's what started happening in the 70s mm-hmm. is it just started getting played. And then you and I were in the the uh, home video business back in the 90s. Yes. And in the, in those early days of VHS, you had these companies like Good Times Video and some of these other ones that had all these public domain films. So you would see they would have a version of It's a Wonderful Life. And regardless of what, what the print looked like, you could get it for like five bucks. And then mm-hmm. an, another company, because it was there was still the, the rights were a, a tangle for a while, uh, you had all these companies just putting it out. So they, it was just out there. you know. So I think that was the benefit. Yeah, uh, totally. Eventually, Republic Pictures kind of got all the all the loose ends tied up with the rights and, and who's owning it and who has the master and, and kind of got it under control. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then really started to kind of, okay, we don't, you know, I think they signed a deal with Turner, like back in the 90s, whatever, we'll only show it three times a year to get it under control, to protect it a little bit more. So it just didn't become something that was out of, like, yeah, always it's, and, and, it, and it, it's one of those real great stories you hear about certain films that initially don't do well when they first come out. So it's really not about the box office draw. It's, it's not about, you know, it's about the the word of mouth and and how many times you've seen it over the years. And it's, it's just, it becomes such a beloved, almost, almost cult classic in a sense, like, it, you know, at first, and I, then I of course it, then it became, first. you know, yeah, I think it was. And, and then it yeah. kind of surpassed it and became right. even bigger. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe there was a, a 40, 40 year delay on this film where those audiences weren't getting this, but the, you know, Sin, you know, you go through some cynical times, uh, you know, society changes, yeah, things upheaval. And then more weary public. Starts, yeah. Coming right that, off of World War Two. Sure. Yeah. yeah but even later, I'm talking, you yeah. go through the 60s and you go through all wow. this upheaval where things people get a little cynical. And then this film starts like bubbling up on TV mm-hmm. and people start seeing it. And it's like, oh, you know, they, they it kind of recalls to that simpler time of, you know, well, yeah, this is what it's about. Be thankful for for what you've got. And sure. not worry about what you don't have or what you could have had. So um, it, it's, yeah, it's a re- very interesting journey. But I think that's where I started seeing it when I worked at Suncoast. So pro- I guarantee yeah, you would, the first time I saw you it. You would never know that it had that journey. It, it had that history, you know, because you look at the film and it looks like a great, like real big studio production. Yeah. Like, you know, the two cinematographers on this movie. You know, that that's a rarity. You know, you, you don't really see that often. I mean, two two big cinematographers, I think at the time, I mean, I know one of them is a is a cap or regular, but uh why? Why why two cinematographers? And you would never, you know, when you watch the film, it it doesn't look like it it's two separate things. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it, it's there's a consistency to it that by the look of it, it and it yeah, what a what a marvelous job they did they did on this thing. High, you know, it, it looks high rate. Yeah, it's well, first it was. rate production. It, it was. It was I mean, production it, it, standards, but it's like it didn't. Three million it wasn't bucks at the time. Like one of you, one of the main big studios at the time, like Warner Brothers or anything. Yeah, any no, it wasn't. Guys, you know. But, but it's, they, they but, certainly put put the. I, I, I think when Capra came out of the came out of the war, he started his own studio, Liberty Films, and that's Liberty, where you see the yeah. first imprint. 
That's so, right. So, you know, he was getting things going. I mean, at the time, James Stewart was one of the biggest stars. So that's mm -hmm. he was like bankable, like like, you know, all day and twice on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So that was it, it made its money back. But, yeah, it was certainly it might be held now when you look back in, in the realm of like Casablanca and, and these great films from the 40s. But back then it really wasn't uh, it wasn't that. But now yeah. it is. And, and that's the great thing about it is it, it kind of had it had a delayed growth spurt, which probably made it not get so played out throughout the years uh, and not taken for granted. And then when it had this resurgence, a whole gr generation of people kind of grew up with it that were mm -hmm. well past when it came out. And maybe people that were around when it came out don't even remember it if it didn't do that well. But now yeah. it's fun. Now everybody fondly remembers it. And that's what we're here to talk about and celebrate well, with this wonderful cast. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Jimmy Stewart. I yeah, guess we'll start with him. <laughs> start at the top. Yeah, this is this is like <laughs> one of those great, uh, you know, this uh, typically, you know, you have your actor director relationship, and uh, he had worked with with Capper on, to, on Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and a and one of my f other favorite Capper films, which is a, a, an adaptation of the play, You Can't Take It With You, which I absolutely love that film as well. But yeah, I mean it. He had that reputation. That, that's the thing. Coming he, he into did. this film, the he, every, had, yeah. he had the everyman reputation. So you're kind of exactly. buying. We talk about, oh, the you know, the Al Pacino character. And when did he become that? And when did Nicholson become the Nicholson character? Well, Jimmy Stewart, right. like you, you were you were buying into that predetermined character of the everyman, especially after Mr. Smith goes to Washington, the idealist yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So he's bringing that with him into this film. And then and then Capra is bringing his style into this film also as well with, mm -hmm. with, you know, so yeah, you're already kind of setting the table for what is going to be in, in the, you know, like you said, the Capra it's, corn. It's that kind of thing though. Like his, that reputation that Jimmy Stewart had, like, you know, he, he did go on to do some really some other kind of things, some darker roles. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny to see him play yeah. something Actually, like rear this, window. After this, or, he started you know, to go towards those darker things. Yeah. It was, this was kind of one of the last yeah, of those roles, yeah. you know. And when he went into yeah. the fifties and the sixties, yeah, the, there started to be a little, a little bit of a darker. He's, yeah, he started getting a little more noirish with his stuff, with his picks yeah. and his choices. Sure, but he's Paul still Northside, seven seven Jimmy seven, Stewart. and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of those other ones that that came out afterwards. But he's still very much Jimmy Stewart. Like I, you know, Tom Hanks to me is is the modern day Jimmy Stewart. So it's like it's the kind of same thing. Like he. When you I think see Costner Tom was on the, in a, in a, Costner was on the track too, or, or yeah. Costner always reminded me of Henry Fonda, the same type of same type of yeah, every man that, actor, right? Exactly. You know, yep. like in, like he did Field of Dreams and Silverado, so he was kind of like on that path yeah. of yeah, right. this is the this is like that type of guy also who's just kind of like the good the every man and just a regular guy. That's right. Um, you yep. know, he he was on you know Dances with Wolves, so he was definitely on that same. I always looked at him. In, in that way as well as, as that type kind of, of an actor in his early Isn't it career. funny though, there's, you could, you could, you could take actors from our generation, you know, of us growing up and yeah, you know, like Harrison Ford is like, to me, he's like a modern, in the eighties, he was like Humphrey Bogart, right? He was, and he even did a film, like a remake of a film starring Humphrey Bogart with Sabrina. So that is that kind of thing, you know, that's sort of like monotone thing of the whole time. And, you know, so I just think it's funny, like with each generation, there is someone to compare to, to fit that mold and to compare yeah. to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's, there's it's, no, it's there's no James Cagney comparison. Though. <laughs> there was only one. Yeah, that's there true. I, I can't think of any, <laughs> anybody in our, you know, in, in, in coming off the seventies that, 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 that would, yeah, I don't know. I, no yeah, that, that's something to think about. Everybody else Absolutely. has got, everybody else has a doppelganger. <laughs> Cagney right. has none. He was one of a kind. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, then you've got Donna Reed. Yeah. Uh, one of her early roles. She became known really <clears throat> um, after, I mean, after this, she won an Academy Award mm -hmm. um, from For Here to Eternity. And then she had a, a TV show, The Donna Reed Show, for like eight years or something like six or eight yeah. years. Yeah. Long very, run. very popular in the 50s. Uh, Lionel Barrymore as as Potter, as Henry Potter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Happy New Year. In jail. Same, same to you. One A, one A. In you know. jail. <laughs> so, of, of course, of the bar of the Barrymore, they'll run you out on a rail. Uh, yeah, ironically, uh, of course, I mean, of the he, acting Barrymore fam uh, family. Um, yeah, ironically, he uh, he. I think that what got him the role was his voice. Uh, you know, he he used to do voice adaptations of Scrooge. 
Oh yeah, he's you absolutely know, like, scourge. Like play- oh, oh yeah, there's this no is doubt. Absolute, this is def- this is absolutely a loose adaptation oh, of sure. a Christmas the Carol short story well, because- was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's Based you know definitely seeing what you know if you yeah. you know the comparisons are are very loose, but the the framework is there. Of uh, George Bailey is nowhere near a Scrooge character, but he is somebody that that gets to see what his life would have been like, or or mm-hmm. what missed up, or what his life wouldn't have been like. Actually, in the reverse, yeah. little little twist there. Uh, you've got Henry Travers as uh, as Clarence, the angel, Thomas <laughs> yeah. Mitchell as Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy, what a <laughs> with character! The string, with the strings around his finger. Uh, Ward, ba- we talked about Ward Bond in the beginning as, yep. uh, as Bert, the cop and, uh, yeah, Ward Bond is, I guess he gets the first trophy for being in two films that we've done, uh, done yeah. podcasts on. He was, uh, he was Tom Polehouse in our in Maltese Falcon. Falcon. Yep. Yep. And now he's, he's Bert, the cop. And uh, typically he was uh, attached to, he did a lot, uh, pretty much, well, he was in almost every John Ford film. Yeah. You know, he, he was, was a, he was a, a staple. Yeah. So. A heavy, uh, uh, a side guy. I mean, yeah, he did, he did guy. everything. He's got yeah. just one of those faces, you know? Right. Yep. And uh, he's partnered with Ernie, Ernie, the cab, the cab driver. And I don't know if this was the legend, but obviously if you, if you put them together, Ernie and Bert or Bert and Ernie, uh, I don't know if that's where Sesame Street got their inspiration from, but it's co- very coincidental. I think it is that those those two are named Ern- Bert and Ernie. It's not, it's not really it, it's not really well known. I mean, it's not really yeah. I don't see it anywhere. But I think I think I always thought it was. I mean, yeah. You know why not? Jim Henson yeah. might might have been a fan of the film, and sure, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things that yeah, I'll and, go with uh, that. Sheldon <laughs> Sheldon know? Leonard. Oh as, yes, uh, yeah, as uh, as Nick the bartender. <laughs> Do I have to slip you my left as a convincer? We serve Out hard you drinks two. to guys that want to get drunk fast. Out you two pixies go through the door well, through the window. <laughs> here's, a, here's a fun. Are, are you a, are you a uh, Big Bang Theory fan? Yes. Right, well, well, there you go. Yeah. This is this is the this was the inspiration for the two characters, Sheldon and Leonard. It came okay. from Sheldon Leonard. I don't that's know if fan- you knew that, but that's no, uh, I did not know that. Yeah, but that's, this, wow. this actor Sheldon Leonard is is where those the, the the two first names of Sheldon and Leonard from Big Bang. Well, there you go from this actor. So it's like the um, Bert and Ernie thing, though, and, right? And yeah. he's got yeah, and he's and Sheldon Leonard has you may not know his name, but he's got one of those faces that you've seen him. I think he's even been in an Abbott Costello. I think he was like a gangster. He plays those. Oh yeah, he's he plays the, the heavy also. That's he's right. like one of those guys, you know. But he where also did be- off calling me Nick anyway. But what people yeah. might, what you might not know is that he became a uh, an established television producer. Yeah, like he, big time. He, yeah, worked on uh, I Love Lucy. He worked on uh, the Danny Thomas show, and yeah. uh, I think the Dick Van Dyke show. I think he was one of the, the yep. executive producers on that. Sure. Yeah. yeah so, so he he, par- had, he had, parlayed yeah. his you know minor acting career into yep. uh, behind the scenes work, which mm-hmm. is great. Yeah. He's but if you look at him, he's got one of those. Fits. So this is just a really great th- this cast real uh, this cast goes deep for. For a film, uh, you know, w- that deals mainly with one person, there are so many side characters. There's there's, there's oh, Martini's yeah. Bar, there's there's Mr. Gower, there's everybody that's at the building and loan, Eustace, yeah. and all these other uh, characters. That's right. Um, and then Bert and Ernie and and Violet. I mean, th- and then Mr. Potter. It, it goes really deep with with all these side characters, and you really yeah. spent, you know, the the movie you you spend a, basically a life with this guy, mm-hmm. um, with George Bailey. So these characters are kind of throughout the whole the whole mix in different where in different things that happen. Usually, it's you know, if there's something with the building alone, you, you're in the, you're pretty much always those people are always in there. You never see them outside of their domain. So you never see any mm. of the building alone people outside of the building alone, except for Uncle Billy with the one scene when he's drunk and, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Give me my hat. Which one's my hat? The one in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that that was a, a a mistake. That was a flub that that he when he when he when he walks off off camera, you hear that loud crash that actually happened. And Jimmy Stewart's like watching it the whole and he could see the big smile on his face, but they kept it in the film. Because it was so perfect, you couldn't you couldn't have timed that better. Like, yeah, I don't think it was his, his intention to no. actually slip and fall. Yeah, it crashed into like the film cans or whatever. <laughs> and you hear it, he's like, "I'm all right, I'm, I'm all right. right, I'm all Leave right." It. Yeah. Like, like those yeah. are some of the beautiful happenstances exactly. in film. Is, yeah. is just like you know, and you know, if nobody breaks character, like if Jimmy Stewart had kind of broke, you wouldn't have been able to use it. But since he yeah. kind of stayed in character and they kept rolling, it was like, "This is a this is a take." Yeah. Like, but this That's just happened. This is like some gold that we didn't have to didn't have to script for, you know, so you get some nice things about that. So, Um, yeah, I mean, these characters that you speak of, uh, they're, 
Yeah, and they're not, they're not, these are not cameos. These are not, these are not, there's really no small role in this film, in this film, because they, this, they, they established the community. They're part of, they're very yeah. much part of George Bailey's life. And, and yeah. everybody has a moment. Everybody has some, a, a stake in this, in this, in this story of some sort, whether they're going through a tough time or they're working for the bank or they're working for, you know, whatever, uh, the building and loan that, you know, people that, you know, that at the boarding house, his mom and dad and his brother. And, you know, there's just, every character has something to this, you know, to the story, which yeah. that's not, that's not easy to do, man. I mean, that, no, you know, it's a talking, lot of characters to juggle. It's a, exactly. It's a lot of yeah. juggling going on yeah. here to, to get from, to get their, their lines in and have enough, you know, have enough of, of meat on the bone for their lines to, to you get to know even Annie, the, you know, the, the housekeeper. Yeah. She's got, you know, she's oh, I'm saving my money for a divorce. If I ever get married, like at the end, like you kind of, you know, that, that <laughs> kind of tells you everything you need to know about the character. Like they, they, they really put some, some really, they say a lot without, without being able to say a lot, you know, that's they, right. It's really word, word economy and, and sets and, and how people are dressed and how they act. But, and it, and it starts off way, way, way back when George was a little boy, Oddly enough, what I just learned, this might blow your mind. The kid that played young George Bailey mm -hmm. ended up becoming a, a, a also like a line producer and a consultant. He worked on Heat, Michael Mann's Heat. He was a Did consultant. he really? Yeah, he was a production consultant for Heat. Wow. The kid, he played George Bailey as a that's, kid in the 40s. That's fantastic. And he yeah. was a line producer and, and or consultant on Heat, on Michael Mann's Heat. Wow. That's pretty wild. Yeah, that it is. is like a long <laughs> sure. stretch of time. Like absolutely, you, you, you yeah. think so far back, you're like, oh my god, he was a, that little kid back then. He must be like whatever. But yeah, pretty pretty wild. So okay, um, yeah, yeah and, it, and 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 it's and that's the whole the whole movie hinges on really it, it starts from there, but just about uh, about George's. I don't know if it's mis misfortune or just. You know, it's one thing that happens, like I said in the beginning, it's, it's like a dark film. I mean, honestly. It is. It really is. And and the thing of it is, is like, it's not, to me, it's not overly sentimental. It's, it, it, it isn't, it's life, right? Yeah. It depicts life. I think life. it's sentimental in the way it's, pre, in the way it's presented, like the, the town. And sure. The set, like, like that's, the, I think that's the story sentimental book. look to it. Yeah. Right. It's very story But what goes on in the town? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, it, it <laughs> yeah. I mean. It's, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, you get this character of George. He's the everyman, but he's he's always the the adult in the room, and and that's one of my favorite scenes is when he's uh, at the, he gets a little bit older and he's talking to his dad, and his dad wants him to stay on and, and help with the building and loan, and of course George is just itching to get out of this town because like like everyone like everyone wants that right? They there's yearning of of moving on and, and yeah. living your life and getting Having you know, an adventure. He's got, he's, he's got, he's got ideas. He's got dreams. He's got aspirations. And uh, one thing leads to another and none of this allows him to leave the town. And it's like, unfortunately that's, he's stuck, you know, and you see this frustration in George Bailey over, over the course of the film. It's not like, you know, he's just doing it. Okay. Everything's fine. Kind of thing. You, yeah. every, every chance you get, you see him, you see the frustration, you see yeah, there's him. There's another, another like, sly yeah. look or or a, a, bite, a bite of the lip like when harry yeah. brings brings his wife home right like you know and he's the like disappointed you know, like you know ruth ruth dakin barely and george like looks he's like you know like like he knew exactly immediately he's like man you know like this is this is gonna be a problem you know and, and when everything yeah he's just always chomping at the bit to get out of, yeah. of bedford falls you know but it's almost, very real it's yeah. a very real reaction it's a very human reaction to be envious to be like he sends his brother off to college instead of him because you know he, he ends up doing all of these doing for other people always putting other people first mm -hmm. in in the film and which you know he can't do what he wants to do so he's stuck in this in this crappy place and you know one thing leads to another his father has a stroke and they won't the only reason this this building will stay afloat is if George takes over and he so he has to, you know, he stays on, sends his brother Harry to college instead yep. of him. He ends up getting married. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll come over and, and take over for you. But well, you know, let's talk about that, yeah. you know, like because I, I got an opportunity <laughs> elsewhere with, with, a, with a job. And George is like, yeah, OK, you know, 
Well, yeah, gone, up to that know. point, he still has like the hope. He's got like the brochures because, like, yeah, you see in the clean. first half, it's like it, it's still there's still some some semblance of reality that yeah. first it was first he was going to travel and then go to college from there, and then he missed the opportunity to travel, so he's just going to go to college, mm-hmm. right? Like, like each time his dream gets like truncated a little yeah. bit, a little bit more. First, it was this big expansive thing of traveling and and college and career, yeah. Then it became okay, just college. He can't even go on his honeymoon. Like everything he's yeah, any anytime yeah. he's about to do something, it gets truncated for some tragedy or something that pulls him away. Right. And it the, just the takes like happens, like the yeah. run, the bank run, every you know, he's like, yeah, everybody's out of, of money. Soul each time. Like <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, like really, it's, it's what are you gonna you know, do? I mean, you you know, yeah, you you feel for the guy. Oh. But and and it's like you know, it gets to that point where and he tries. He tries so hard to be to do the right thing, and he just will not give in to Potter. And Potter, to me, is like it's it's weird that you know every time you see Potter, he never changes. Like even as yeah. a kid, he's still an old man in the yeah. wheelchair. Like <laughs> it's weird because it, it's it's almost like he represents something more than just a character, right? He's like he's like he represents but, like the corruption, like he you do, know. He, or, well, or, he do or, represent well. Let, well, that's the or thing. Greed. Like, uh, most greed. Well, greed, but most yeah. people would would argue that he he's also doing a lot for the town. He's keeping it thriving. It's you know this it's money being made and you at know that cost? kind of thing. But what at, at, at what cost exactly? But still, but some cynical people might look at this film and say, well, you know, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of parodies and a lot of jokes being made about that. Like I, I could think of a, a episode of King of Queens with uh, uh, Jerry Stiller <laughs> that he's he had never seen the film and he's an old man and he's watching it's a wonderful life with and his and Leia Remedy's character you know he's she's like I can't believe you've never seen this movie it's such it's a great movie right he's like well actually this is a swing and a miss <laughs> <laughs> he goes with George Bailey the town couldn't be duller without him there's there's nightclubs there's casinos it's fabulous <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know yeah, so there it, there are some people out there I'm sure that are not fans of the film that that look at the movie in that light and saying, yeah. you know, well, this is reality. This is yeah, you know, pr- this is progress for better this, or for worse. Exa- but exactly, yeah. I, I think I think the message is is that you can have progress. It just doesn't have to be at the cost of your soul. Because the flip side of that is George Bailey was saying, yeah, these people are are buying houses now. They're, That's they're right. getting yep. houses. They're helping each other. We're just not doing it on your terms and with your with your rundown buildings. Yeah. Uh, we're giving, you know, so he, he does have that idealized version of how those things should work. Whereas Potter is like, yeah, if someone doesn't pay you foreclose, you know, the, you'll get mm-hmm. the next sucker to come in and and that's how the world works and get used to it. And, and that's yep. how it is. And, and uh, he, and, and that's one of the great scenes is when gets, uh, when Potter goes, you know, has George barely come in and he's offering him a job and he's wooing him and, and it's like the moment of weakness. It's like, well, that's the temptation. This, this yeah. sounds pretty good because I can't, you know, oh, you like to travel maybe to New York. Like, and he's yeah. kind of saying the things, you know, and he's acknowledging he's, you know, you, you hate the building and loan. You're the only person that hates it more than I do. Oh, he's hitting so he, where he lives because yeah, he's, he, he, he knows, acknowledges, that, he knows is, that, right, that he's exactly. frustrated and, and yep. really playing on it and really kind of, kind of snake charming him. And, and he, and he, he, he gets something like he's got, you know, can I think about it? He's like, yeah, talk to your wife. And then when he shakes his hand, he gets like that. He got, yeah. It kind of does like that rubbing. Like that hand must have been like clammy and cold and dead. Like it must have been like a clammy, like dead, cold, like dead, a dead hand. hand. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And that's what kind of woke him up. You know, yeah. and that's one of the best. You he know, almost turned to the dark here side. And you spin your little webs. <laughs> like yeah, one, of, one, of the, one of the best. Every little spider. And, yeah, you know, like he no, kind of no, no. he kind of wakes up out I'm, of it that. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, I uh, right that you, moment you, you, he almost turns this... to the dark side, like he, he's he's yeah. like Anakin Sky, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's literally do that it. kind of thing where you do you're, it. You're, yeah, you're drawing do him it. in, and and luckily, <laughs> yeah, he get, he just gets himself out of. But you know, you think about it, and he keeps thinking about, but, he's, but you notice the scene right after he comes home, and he's he's actually still thinking about it. Did I? What did I do? Did I make a yeah. mistake here? Uh, you know, I want a better life for myself yeah, and my, my good? family. You know, so he's actually thinking is, why did you marry me? And he's feeling b- bad about himself, which which hurts. You you watch him and he's like, he blames himself for not being more successful. Yeah. But the whole time he's, he's, 
you don't you, he doesn't realize what he's actually doing yeah. and that of course, I, I think you he, know, I think he off. backs into it you know because every time yeah. I mean he never w- had an interest in the building alone he never had an interest in running no, any did of not. these things right. but then once he ends up doing it he ends up learn like then he ends up fighting for it so when they try and take it away it's like well you're not going to take this away because you know you this it's is the, the one thing, thing that, you, that you don't have you can't get you know it, right, but exactly. but, he, it, it, but he hates it and he doesn't want anything to do with it and and you know does it begrudgingly but then also when whenever it's threatened he comes to its aid and and comes to its protection which is kind of weird and i think that that probably is what yeah the, the that pulls him in both directions that that he really hates it but then he can't help protecting it and he's not going to see this fall to someone evil like that just on principle that's right like be just because you because you have everything else you're not getting this at much at the detri- the detriment of his own life honestly and the you one know, hand, that's where it's it gets like, darker right and the because on the one on the, on the one hand like i said he's doing all this for the for the town like you know for these people people are getting you know moving out of the place where potter you know this like kind of slum type area and building these nice little cute little houses and they're not extravagant houses but they're a hell of a lot better than what they were living in before yeah. and, and and you know but he's not making a dime off of it he's not making any kind of a profit he's you know he's just still enough to get by yeah they're scraping enough, by exactly and so but that it takes its toll it starts to All take right. its toll on him that you know he gets more more and more frustrated with that it's like you know what I, I, he doesn't you could sense that he, you know, every time he starts thinking about himself, something happens where, yeah. you know, he's, he's kind of pulled out of it and, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, like but, Violet comes and she wants the, money. Exactly. She's going to go to New York. Yeah. And, and then that, that fateful day where, you know, uncle mm-hmm. Billy goes to the bank and, you know, misplaces the money. We'll say misplaces the money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, you know, and, and, and things really take a turn from there. I mean, everything yeah. was kind of on a trajectory of, okay, you're just kind of watching things happen and yeah, he's missing opportunities, but he seems like he's okay. Cause he's, he's, you know, he's married and he's doing good things. So the movie kind of moves along on that pace. But then once you get to the part with the money, it starts to really get dark because that's when, you know, when he basically assaults uncle Billy, right. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're, you know, where, you know, you stupid, silly old man. Like he's had, a, he's at his breaking point. And it's very yeah. interesting because the he, uncle Billy character see, through, throughout the whole thing seems to be like a buffoon. He's, he can't remember anything. He's living yeah. with squirrels and, and all this crazy stuff. Yeah, but he's, when I, when I watched it again, I caught, I caught a line when George, when Jimmy Stewart is questioning Uncle Billy about the money, he goes, Where, did you look everywhere? Ba, 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 ba. And Uncle Billy's like, yeah. He goes, I've even looked in rooms that I hadn't gone in since Laura died. I think he says Laura died. Mm-hmm. Now, who is, who's, I'm going to assume maybe Laura is his wife, but maybe yeah. that's the reason that he's in this spiral too. Like, like you don't really ever find out about him. He, he comes off as like this quirky character kind of played for less but not really he's kind of pathetic because he can't you know he just seems like he's a mess yeah, and that he's... one little line he says it when he's when he's getting like shaken and you have to listen for it he kind of says you know i've you know since since i lost laura and there's kind of like a little nugget of yeah. his backstory of what well what happened there and is that the reason why he's just like this mess of a person because he's yeah. living it's all shabby and that, and that he knows scene it is really great you you have to watch um and what what what's Thomas what's, Mitchell in that scene when 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 Henry oh, yeah. when uh, James Stewart is is really shaking him he is just right there he he it breaks your heart because he's yeah. lashing out at the people closest to him and then the thing of it is is the, the guy's clearly should you know, not be handling like, money he, wait wait what well, he's clearly out of his mind he's you know he's he's you know you can see that he he's a drinker he's you know he's this this whatever this trauma yeah. happened which they don't explain but he should not be doing what he's doing. Yeah, he's not right? cut but, out for the banking but he, industry, but he's, but he's doing it out of, you know, cause it's family. It was, you know, yeah, he was it's like, all he's bro- got, it's almost like that's all he's got. Exactly. You so know, he's George, got of course, there, he's not going to take that away from his, you know, from his yeah. uncle. And he could never run it either. That was yeah. the whole thing is like, you know, there was no way that right. after, after George's father passed away that, and that was the ultimatum is like, we'll, we'll, we'll vote against Potter. If, if George yeah. stays as the executive secretary and runs it, because Billy certainly, you know, he's like, Uncle Billy here. He's your, he's your man. It's like, no way. <laughs> yeah, no. 
No, it would have been, you know, <laughs> you know, with we, all the strings and, on his fingers, you know, it's just and the, this and, and but the thing of it, Uncle Billy knows it. He he he, yeah. he he knows that he's no, you know, he tells George and in that in that moment too, in that scene too, he's like, I'm no good to you, George. I'm just, you know, I, I can't think yeah. anymore. I can't it hurts. think it hurt. Yeah, it's it's, you know, it's, it's really it, kind it of dark. It breaks your heart. It breaks yeah. your heart. Yeah. It really goes to yeah. a dark place because because then yeah. You know George James Stewart is just uh, now he's kind of uh, the reality. It's now it's not just a a, a missed opportunity or uh, you know not going to college or your brother getting married. Now it's like the stakes are really high because it's money and, and yeah. in the banking industry it's like embezzlement and like you said it's scandal and yeah you know, it's, it's, somebody's going to prison. Well, it's not going to be me. You know it's like that. Like now he's he, it's kind of every man for himself. Like he doesn't even care anymore. Yeah, you know, I mean, and thousand dollars then was yeah. like. Yeah, you know, hundred thousand or maybe a quarter of a million or so. You know, it was that. I mean, probably not that much, but it was just. Yeah, it was enough that it's, it was a considerable. You know, yeah, chunk. If of, they're building a house for five thousand. Yeah, eight thousand. You know, almost a house and a half, or more than a house and a half. So right. it's, but, it's but, a significant. But I think sum of money. a lot of it has to do too with at that point. This is what sets George over the edge. I mean, this is his breaking. It is his, every man has a breaking point and this is yeah. like, and it's a, it's obviously a, a good enough reason to be upset and, and everything else, but would he have been as upset or would he been, okay, we'll, 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 we'll work this out somehow. We'll try to figure yeah. this out. But at that point, George is so frustrated. So like, God damn it. This is like, this is so, you know, one thing after another with this poor guy. And it's just at this moment, he's just, uh, this is just it. And, and, and unfortunately, like I said, he takes it out on the closest people to him. He goes home. Yeah. When he goes home, it's just, and, so, it's the, it's the worst thing. I mean, Oh, and the kids are just, you know, it again, I, I tear, I tear up every time, even talking about it. I tear up watching it. It's like that scene where he's just, he starts yelling at the kids and, yeah. but it, he's still tender at the same time. Like when, when the, when the little, the, his little goes up one, to see boy, yeah. Or when the littlest boy comes up to him and he's like, you know, with the mask and he grabs him and he's like, sh- and he's crying and he's shaking and he's just, you know, hugging him so tightly. And because he's lost. He, yeah. He's, he's yeah. He like doesn't know what to do. He's just, he doesn't know what to do. He's so he's, desperate. He's so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Donna Reed doesn't get enough credit either. as just no. like, like always by his side, like the, the rock and the anchor and the, you know, the, the person that, that tries to keep him grounded in, in, cause she understands what's important. And George thinks those are simple dreams. Like, oh, why do you want to live in Bedford Falls for? What do you want to yeah. be here for? Right. Like, why do you want to live in that that house? You know, yeah. and it's her wish that actually does. If you're going into the supernatural, it's her wish that does this. Mm-hmm. Because when they throw the rocks at the window, he you're not supposed to say what your wish is when you do something like that. And he said what his wish was. So you knew it was never going to come true. Yeah. And then she threw a rock and she never said what her wish was. But then she said it after it came true. That's right. So if you want to blame, you want to blame somebody for all this. <laughs> yeah very good it's point mary, it's mary yeah. hatch <laughs> yeah <laughs> because her, because her, she's the one that that knew how that stuff worked and she didn't say what her wish was and she just walked yeah. away and but, but what but we didn't mention the, at this point was that the, the, uh, this whole movie is in flashback and it's being you know told yeah. from the from the point of view of angels in in the sky the movie starts you know where yeah. and uh he, they're they're grooming clarence who turns out to be uh george's too his his guardian angel and so he they got to get they got to bring him up to speed on 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 his life and all that kind of so the whole movie is that up to this point and now now it kind of turns into this like almost whole twilight other film zone. yeah it's like a twilight zone episode yeah, it's like it's yeah he well the film it, now yeah gets weird exactly. it's strange if you want yeah. to talk about like okay this was a regular movie then it gets strange <laughs> it, right? it, like it certainly does kinda, you know, there's like a demarcation point, but it's like three quarters of the way through. You're getting this film, and then you then it totally, you almost forget because because they don't really, you know, they yeah they they have the beginning part with the little stars and they're zipping around the yeah, sky. Yeah, they're angels and, and, and they're there's talking. a couple of there's some narration throughout, but you kind of yeah. almost forget what you don't know really what it's leading to. It's kind of like oh, is this just right. a gim? It's just just a gimmick for for narrating or telling the story. And then when when after George just lashes out at his family, I mean, even yeah. Mary finally is like, you can't treat people like this. Like, just just get out of here. She's probably just been seeing his decline for years of just because yeah. you never like like you never seem happy about his kids. Like they, they kind of go through the kids like, oh, you know, George Lasso Stork. But they kind of like kind of push that through the story like, oh, he had another kid and then he had another kid. And he just kind of like 
push that through and they never really show him like kind of well once again he's interacting he's, with that so it almost seems again, like he didn't really want kids well, well i don't think he did because i i, I honestly and i think it's that thing where he's doing it for her he's well, you know she obviously wants that so he's putting her first putting her needs first she wants to be a homemaker she's you know she fixes up the place and um except for that banister know, it, well, yeah, one kid after another, <laughs> sure. But yeah, but he's, you know, and again, you, you feel like is, you know, uh, he has, a does he have a right to be selfish? Does he, you know, whatever. So you, you are questioning these things along the way. It's like, you know, every time he's like, it's frustrating because you, you know, I wish he could see what, what he's actually doing, but that is the point of the film, which yeah, that's get the whole thing. Right. He's, so, but it, it, it just, yeah, at that moment, it's like, and then, you know, even then, like Clarence comes down and he try and George just at this point, he's just so desperate that he tries to just end it, you know, which, you know, getting to that moment where he's actually thinking about diving off the bridge is, you know, you don't really see too many movies back in the day of people no. wanting to commit suicide. And I mean, you know, it does get go there and it's, it's that it's like a, his own personal hell and, and to say that this is a, a corny Christmas well, and, movie, and, and, and that you know, comes from the from where where Potter says, you know, because because yeah, what before he gets to the bridge and after he leaves his family, he goes to see Potter one more time to <clears throat> get some type of a loan or or get a loan against his his life insurance, and that's when yeah. Potter says, you know, you're worth more dead than alive because you've got no equity in this life insurance that that would yeah. be even worth anything. So so that kind of gives him the thing of okay, well, here's the one thing I can do. That's that true. I have control over mm -hmm. is if I, you know, jump off this bridge, then my family will get, will get the life insurance, you know, which again is you know not a smart idea, but obviously um, and this is where not, we get to see yeah. the great snow for the first time and the Academy <laughs> award winning <laughs> snow makes its appearance. Those big frosty, <laughs> big frosty flakes coming down. Yep. <laughs> dripping. You see it like dripping off the, like, yeah, it's, it's like just, milky. It's it's weird. It's just, yeah, it's bizarre, but uh, <laughs> good. Tech, it, it worked back then and certainly was a award. But but then, what gets, what gets me though, is like when you look over that banister and he's looking at the water and you see the, like the big chunks of ice, like floating yeah, in the water, like, that water has got to be so freezing. freezing like, you know, <laughs> like you would like, if they 30 <laughs> seconds in that thing, you'd be dead, you know, well, like he just jumps in and he, cause Clarence jumps in and he, and you know, he's right about to do give it, it a second. Yeah, and then that's his his you know. true nature comes. He doesn't give it a second thought. He throws his jacket off and goes in. Exactly, and, and then just like think, his brother. Yep. Thing, things kind of take a little, uh, somewhat of a comedic. Like things get so strange because it gets darkly, it gets humorous, but it's kind of darkly humorous because mm -hmm. Clarence is just kind of like, yeah, matter of factly, like I'm a guardian angel, and and there's this whole, the whole relationship between them is really, it's mostly combative until like the very end. Like he doesn't, like yeah. George doesn't believe anything about this, and who would? Mm -hmm. But he gets that opportunity, and this is where the whole Christmas Carol parallels come: is to see, you know, someone takes you on a journey to see an alternate reality. Um, yeah. like it's not com comparable to a Christmas Carol, but uh, it's it's the opposite. And I think everybody, I think everybody has probably thought about that in one point of their life: like, what if I wasn't here? What would things oh, be yeah. like? If I oh, yeah. not in a not in a meet, not in a bad way, not in a suicidal way, but just in a, a philosophical way, like, oh, if I was never here, what, what would have happened to X or, or this or that? I, I think it's one of those things that you can't help thinking about. Or to help or or even to think about some of the thing, mistakes you've made in life. Yeah. And like you think about, oh my God, if I were if I hadn't been around to to affect that person's life or or you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. what what would have happened? Yeah, it's it. You could you could drive yourself crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by thinking that way, of course. You and know, he gets uh, to you know. see it. Like he gets the yeah. full. We get to revisit certain points in the film that are are those, those high points in the story that those we don't realize those end up being the pivot points that we revisit. Mm -hmm. Of you know because Harry wasn't a, a I mean because George wasn't alive he didn't get to save his brother Harry who in turn passes away as a child but then as a result of that doesn't get to ch save people during the war on the carrier yeah. so there's all not just one ripple effect but all these other ripple effects and then that's right the the whole the the scene with mr gower in the beginning that always gets me because it's just so intense when he's slapping him and yeah slapping yeah. him in the ear and he's like don't hit me again you know so so there's ripple effects from from that scene and and there's, so there's so many other ripple effects because he would have he poisoned the kid otherwise if yeah. he had if he had delivered the pills and, and yeah. which would have killed the kid and he you know he sees this he sees Gower as a drunk he was thrown in jail he was 
everything's he, changed. Because he, he killed the kid because he, yeah, he put that, the poison. And so there's all these, yeah. I guess, you know, and, and it's kind of interesting to, to make you, I, I guess as as a kid, he probably think that didn't think that was really such a big thing, but <clears throat> that's the whole point is you don't realize what some of these, what implications mm, your these actions little moments. have. Sure. Yeah. You know, on somebody else and you might, you know, he said, I would never tell or, and, and maybe even forgot about it or whatever, but yeah, it's all these little moments that they start to revisit, you know, and then they go to Martini and in, in the film, he helped Martini get a, uh, get a house and he owned get Martini's bar. And now that, that bar doesn't exist anymore because he wasn't mm-hmm. there to help him, mm-hmm. you know, and now it's Nick's bar and, it's it's rough and tumble and it's you know a bunch of you know hard drinking they got the the enforcers the bouncers throwing people out yeah. so it's a totally different you know and, and potter the town itself you know, is like there's like it's like strip tease yeah, and like 10 you know, cents like a dance like the, a the bottom line is potter team. ended up winning yeah potter <laughs> ended up winning and then you get to yeah. see the results of that as, as people are are Corruption. just more, a little more yep. darker cynical it's it's da- yeah, dance halls you know yeah how about those two guys <laughs> when it's so when George is was supposed to go see Mary, but he goes into town. Yes, I know. And Violet like, yeah. comes over. She goes, she goes, stay here a minute, guys. You know, I might have a date. And they're like, we'll wait for you, baby. Yeah, the <laughs> like, Violet. I, I was like eighty years old. He's like, we'll wait for you, baby. Right. And there's two guys like <laughs> hanging on her. Like she just yeah, walks really, away. Like she's the like you really know, scuzzy she, guys though. Like they're hanging on got, her. You know, right? She's got the reputation, right? Yeah. She, but but obviously she probably you don't know if she. <laughs> sleeps around or whatever but i guess she's got that rep and and got that yeah even as a little girl in the very beginning she's like you know you like everybody what's wrong with that i like i like him and she and and she's like you like every boy she goes what's wrong with that yeah what's wrong with that (laughs) so right then the the, 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 the scene the scene with violet when she's walking in the dress and they're like oh you know i wear this one i don't care what i look like (laughs) <laughs> and then, and then, and then Bert's like, uh, you know, uh, I got to go home and see what the wife is doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. How to, I'm still not sure how to take that line. There's a lot of innuendo. Uh, yeah, in I'm not things. sure. That's yeah, what I did, love. See, that's what sure I love that about that. I'm you know, like, did he mean like, well, I kind of got myself kind of a little, uh, little excited. So I'm going to go home. I think or, so. You, you or, take it or for or what is it is. I'm man. embarrassed and I just got to go home. Like, no, you know, no, no. Go it's, wife, it's, you know? That it is exactly the opposite. <laughs> it, it, it is. Yeah. It goes. That's what I love about watching a lot of these classic films and you know it's it, they're time capsules they when people say they're dated it's uh yeah they are of course you know but like, they had but to be more clever about things that's exactly, the thing is, exactly. It, it's not like that, it's, these these thoughts didn't exist back then no it's they like needed they, to figure but, out a way to get, to get around it across it. and yeah. set innuendos like how far can we go yeah that's the that's the entertainment yeah. factor that's that's why i love the maltese you know, falcon because they really exactly, push yeah. they really yep. push it out there and try and oh and get away with it too there's some of yeah. the dialogue in that is pretty racy like you know yeah. like, so it's kind of stop a spank and you know like the, yeah you know, like, like, like <laughs> yeah so well, i always wondered know. about that I, I i i was i could i was always reading that line two ways like he was kind of get himself a little excited he was going home or you know, like he's so whipped that he can't even have those thoughts. It's like, I gotta go, I gotta go home and see what the wife is doing. I, I, like, I think know, it's most definitely sure. the opposite. You, think it's the, the opposite? you know, he's going to go home and just <laughs> take care of business, you know, there cause you he's, you know, Bert. <laughs> Bert but, the then, but then you find out that even he was affected, right? I mean, his wife leaves him like when in this yeah, alternate Ernie, Ernie's state. Wife. Ernie's wife. Ernie's also, the cab yeah. driver. Yeah. The cab driver. And, and uh, Oh God! Every, everybody's affected. Everyone, everyone yeah. that we spoke of, all these characters that, that have weaved themselves in and out of George's life. Yeah, ba- you know. Bailey Park, where the houses were yep. built, as a graveyard, and, yep. and there's all the people buried there. And um, I mean, they take it to the nth degree with that whole thing, but but that's to illustrate that um, it was a small town. So he really mm-hmm. was ingrained in the small town, and and by by his nature with with building alone and helping people, he affected that many people. Um, but was always looking inward about what he wasn't getting and how he didn't go to college. And, but and he couldn't even go to war because of his, yeah, because of his ear was because he saved his brother. He, yeah. and he, he was got deaf in one ear as a result. Of, so he couldn't even go off to war even like yeah. he even wanted to do that and he couldn't do it. So, so yeah, he was basically the, uh, the figurehead of that town. And, you know, he was the, the, the shine, you know, the, the shining light as it were, where, you know, he, the, you needed that, that yin yang of, of Potter and, and George Bailey kind oh, yeah, of like, absolutely. you know, like just the good and the, the good and the, and the bad the, and the you dark know, like, and the light. Exactly. <laughs> so there's that balance there, you know, keeping the town afloat, you know, keeping it yeah. sane, keeping it, you know, whatever yeah. that all goes away when he wants to end it. Yeah. And, that, and that in itself is a very selfish act, right? Even then he's like, I, I 
killing himself. He thinks he's going to be doing the right thing, but it's not. It's it, it, it's very much. It's still very a selfish thing because you obviously because you see the effect it would have had to go through all of that in, in, in a lifetime, and then to see that. And, and, and I don't know I, how do you come away, how do you walk away from that and not be totally insane? You yeah. know, just like the darkness of that, and just you know the whole like. But he, it, it affects him the total opposite, you know, and he comes yeah. out of this and he's, he's yeah, I, th- I think, I think what it is, is the, I mean, the last two, the last two people he goes to see is his mother yeah. who doesn't recognize him. And then Mary mm-hmm. and, and that was real. And, and, you know, Mary's reaction, you know, she's, uh, oh, she's an old maid. I mean, she's, how, she's pretty young. I don't think she's like old maid material. Like they have yeah, like that, walking that's, out of, never like walking out of the library. Me, that like was, she's yeah, that was the, that's one they, of probably they, one of the one part of the movie where I thought it was a stretch because she, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Like she wouldn't have gotten married to somebody else. I don't yeah, like I don't Sam Wainwright it. or somebody like she would really, never have known if George had never been born. She wouldn't have been. She wouldn't have fallen in she love with been him pining. as a kid. Yeah, she wouldn't have been pining over him all these years. So. Exactly. So uh, unless that to, was her you know, destiny. Unless, unless they're saying, "Well, that was her destiny," and be, and without her destiny, she, you know, she's got nothing. So that you could you could read I, okay that without yeah. that, you know, that that right. that's that's like her thing was she was always meant to be with him. Barring that, she's got no destiny. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they really play her up as like the marm, and she's like walking and. <laughs> You know, yeah. he's grabbing her and he's like shaking her, and, and all of a sudden the Mary, crowd is Mary, like grabbing her. I need you, Mary. I need you. He's like, he, and then it goes into the crowded bar, and like she's like, oh, get him away, and she's fainting, and like you know, you see, but you see within the bar, you see all of these like these side characters. Oh, yeah. by the way, some of these characters are not very nice people. Like, right? They, you know, like when the when the bank thing happened. Like the, you got that one guy, that guy Tom. Yeah. He's like, I want all my money now. Two hundred forty-two dollars. Two hundred forty-two dollars in here, and two hundred forty-two dollars <laughs> isn't going to break anybody. Like you know, <laughs> you see all of these, you know, these faces in that crowd, and uh, they're like, but they're helping her. And this guy's a main. Like George comes out, and he's like a maniac, and he's like, you know, you know, the, this kind of mini movie within a movie, right? You kind of get the feeling like, oh, we're, we're watching, we're almost watching a separate film. Yeah, you know, where where it, it's kind of. Th- this mini story kind of comes comes to a, a culmination, and then he finally has his kind of awakening mm-hmm. um, and gets to go home, but and doesn't care, right? Doesn't care about any of the consequences because he has he's seen the light. Yeah, he has seen. Do you the feel light. like? Do you feel like though that, that it could have been that end could have been a little bit longer? Do you feel like that you know that whole stretch of the film, the back, you know, the sort of seeing his whole life up to that point, and then you feel like that scene was rushed. At all, well, all the scenes with him at the very you, end. Well, well, I yeah, mean, you think it, it could have been, you know, that that could have been a little bit longer. Do you think? I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, well, there, was, I, there, you was, know, there was an alternate ending in, in 1986. Saturday Night Live showed the alternate <laughs> ending of uh, the lost ending of, of "It's a you Wonderful were... Life" with <laughs> with, I knew with we... Dana Carvey <laughs> and Phil Hartman and John Lovitz, where. Oh my they god! Found, was, they, yeah. they found the money, and they found <laughs> out that Potter took it, and then they go, "Let's go get Potter." Let's and it go turn get into him. like Frankenstein with the torches, like coming to the like the, the. They go, they go, and he's like, he's like Potter, you, you double crossed me, but you made you left me alive, which was your you know your mistake, mm-hmm. and they just beat the crap. And you see, like it's a them. dummy, like they like throwing him around, like the legs yeah. flapping. And then him. they all get bats, and they're just they're just pounding him with the bats at the end, and they're kicking him, and it's just they push him out of the wheelchair. They push uh-huh. Potter out of the wheelchair. Uh, that was the that was the lost ending. Yeah, but to and that introduced introduced by William Shatner, by the way, in that episode, he was the host. <laughs> That's wanna, right. I think we're gonna we'll, we'll put that in, we'll put that link in the show notes because you you have to see the lost ending to It's a Wonderful yeah. Life from Saturday Night Live. But to but, that, but to but your to, that, to your point. But to um, that, but to that, to that, to, to, to that though, it's it's important to notice that that the movie it doesn't give you that. It doesn't give you, you know, the it, he gets away with it. You know, Potter gets yeah. away with it because and back that's then life. they didn't. That wasn't really allowed. Like back then, the you movie know? code was bad guys were supposed to get their comeuppance, and he didn't. No, you know, a lot, a lot of the like that's why in like all those gangster films, whatever, the gangster always had to die. Because it was supposed to, no matter what, it was supposed to show you that crime didn't pay, and, and you don't want to take that path. And that's why, that's why I said, like you know, Potter to me like represents. He, you know, it's he's a businessman. It's it's life. It it happens yeah. in life. People do. Yeah. You know, and I think the point. Yeah, get, I think you, the, yeah, I think you're you're right. right. The the point is, despite what ha- like. 
despite that the happy ending it wasn't a total tie up at the end where the money magically came back it was right and he has that a money's change gone of heart and, he, and the, yeah the right. bad guy's gonna keep it yeah and and to your point you know i, I don't I, I think the ending i don't think you needed a prolonged ending because you got this really long story of of we we understood how this character was and then at the end we understood what he needed to be grateful for. So we didn't need to see after like what happened mm-hmm. after how he did this yeah. and what, whatever, like you got the lesson through yeah. the last part, that, that last mini, that last mini film, that last part, act of the film, you, you pretty much, that was, I think that's where the ending starts is as soon as Clarence gets on the scene, I think that's really where the end starts because you start, that's when the hero kind of overcomes all of his obstacles, which is, you mm-hmm. know, classic third act kind of screenwriting stuff. And yeah, you you really most people think of the ending as at the very end when all the money comes piling in but that's just kind of that's almost like the epilogue i guess where mm-hmm. you know everything leading up to that where <clears throat> he learned his lesson so at the very end yeah i think that's the the best way to leave it is kind of him smiling him understanding and and you see that he's kind of redeemed and he's he's wiser he's be, he, yeah, he's wiser yeah. and he's he's going to have more of a spring in his step. And I think it's probably best gonna that try he's kind of like left I mean, but, there. But life's going to go on, though. You you do get huh. that sense, though. Like when the movie ends, it's like, yeah, the next day, there's still going to be problems in the town. Yeah. Potter's still going to be there. He's, you know, so I like that about the movie. Like there's, I think it was important for Capra to to to, to show that. Like he, he he was very adamant about it, keeping it and, you know, giving it that realism, realism and, yeah, and just sort of, you know. Like, it wasn't like Whoville where everybody at the end was, was <laughs> yeah. holding hands and swaying. Exactly. Like, yeah, the, yeah. The, like the, this the, is the, the lesson is, is that life is going to go on, but this person now has a better understanding of what's, imp- of what's really important. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, and that was, the, that's the, the key is, yeah, the, the bad guy got away with the money. Yeah, but that's that wasn't the point. The point wasn't the money. The money was was never the point. It was ne- that was never the point, the point. But it is the point was to understand right. everything else of what of what he had because that's he was always thinking about something else other than he was always you know he was living life in in the negative. He was living about he was living w- with what he didn't have. Yeah, right. And that's, that's right. living your life in the negative is is always you know lamenting. I don't have this. I don't have that. Well, what do you have? Simple, right. simple psychology. It's right there stuff, in front but... of you, and you don't see it. Yeah. You know that's it well, has to be. You have to be shown this, and and that you know. I wish everybody can go through this experience, right, to achieve that. God, kind I hope of not. Just cla- to cut that kind of clarity. <laughs> it's just, just no. Just know, learn it. Learn it from listening to this podcast. There you just go. Learn, don't go watch through the, it. Don't go through it. Don't, well, don't watch live your movie. life like that. Watch, so when watch did you? The movie. When did, you, you said that that was the first time you saw it was uh, around that time. Back That's in the day, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I never. It was never a thing. I don't. I don't remember it being a thing. Like ba- back in the eighties or or that. I I remember it when when I started working at Suncoast in the nineties. It was kind of like oh yeah, was, you know that we would get the shipment of Christmas movies and you would kind of open things up and, and but, yeah, you know. So and and that's really when the home entertainment boom started. So people started grabbing this kind of stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. So I I kind of in my mind that's where I kind of place it. I don't remember like in the eighties. No, I knowing about this film. I know my right? mom was not a, in the seventies when I was a kid. I can tell you that much. No, no, not for, yeah. for, for sure. My, I, I think the first time I, I, my mom was a big fan of the movie. I think she had it on VHS. She actually bought it at that point. Uh, but I never, you know, I, we never watched it. Like she, mm-hmm. she never like, hey, we got to watch this movie. It's a Christmas yeah. movie. I, I got into it on my own, you know, more or less. And in fact. I, it's it's become a, a favorite of mine it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of the greatest films i i think of all time and but there are other movies that have kind of followed that sort of pattern like we always talk about shawshank and to me mm-hmm. shawshank is that very much that kind of capra-esque kind of feel like this 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 character's going through hell and there's all kinds of things that you could take away about hope and you know all that kind of thing and which I love. I love that yeah. type of storytelling. It's kind of like told in a sort of a tall tale mm-hmm. fashion, but it's the point is being made. And there's so the subtext of the movies are so, so rich. And so, you know, it, 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 it keeps you coming back in, and watching these over and over. We went to see it three years ago. It was right before the pandemic and uh, it was playing in the theater here in town mm-hmm. in Frederick in uh, the Weinberg theater. And, um, I got to tell you, man, I, you know, we were all, yeah, we, oh, let's go. Let's, you know, we got dressed yeah. up and, you know, the, the sweaters and, you know, it was nice. It was really, really nice. And this is the first time 
Jake saw it, my son, and he loved it. You know, he, he got something out of it because he hates yeah. black and white movies, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, he got something out of it too. And I got to tell you, man, I, I, there were Marvel movies that didn't get as much applause as this oh, movie no, of got course. This when, is I, when beloved. I, I mean, yeah, when this I is... saw it, I mean, it was a, st- people got up and they gave it a standing ovation yeah, th- even this... after all these years. It's, you know, this is not a, this is not a Christmas movie for, if you're going to call if we're going to call it a Christmas movie, it's not a Christmas movie for kids. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the thing is, you know, most other quote unquote holiday films or Christmas films are geared towards younger kids, yeah. right? The the magic of Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, th- and, and this one is only really literally in Christmas, uh, about Christmas, only in the last, you know, part of the film. It's like Christmas Eve, it takes place, but not specifically about Christmas. There really is no mention of the Christmas spirit and mm-hmm. anything else. It's just th- this event happens to culminate. Right, it on, just on happens Christmas to Eve. Ha- it, and Christmas Eve, and it, yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. and you're saying you're saying that you you kind of there are other films that are like this. There is actually one film; it is not in print anymore. I think I have it on DVD. I don't know if you've seen it, but this is literally the tag. I'm going to give you the tagline from it. Mm-hmm. It is called the tagline for the film when it came out was "Goodfellas meets It's a Wonderful Life." Do you know which film it is? It's a very small film. It's one of my favorites, and it is not available anymore. It's called 29th Street. Oh, you had mentioned it with yeah, Danny Aiello, really... Vincent okay. LaPaglia, and Joe uh, Frank Pesh, and it it is very much in this vein. It is very much, but it's based on a true story um, about about this guy that won the first lot the first lottery in New York when they first had the lottery back in the seventies. This guy okay. won it, yeah, and he's got all these dreams and he's th- things he wants to do and doesn't get to and. Yeah, all these weird things happen to him. Uh, no one's going to be able to find it, but you know, if you want to come to my house, we can watch 29th Street. Um, but it is one of those films that that is kind of like a modernized version of it, because um, mm-hmm. you don't really see this. This you don't really ever see. Was this ever remade? Did ever anybody, anybody ever no. take a swing at this again? I mean, it's been it's been like done on like TV shows and things like. I mean, the, the, like the, loosely the, adapted. Yeah, loosely adapted yeah. and like that kind of thing. You know, the, everybody you know, kind of, but an actual remake or a reboot of the, of the actual story. I don't think so. No, I don't think it exists. Okay. Yeah. If they did it today, it would have to be like <clears throat> somebody in wall street or something, you know, of course. Yeah. A Ponzi scheme, you know, screwing people out of money. And <laughs> <laughs> they did, you know, they movies like Mr. Deeds uh, was redone Yeah, with Adam Sandler. I mean, that was a, re- that was a remake of a Capra film. I think there was a couple, might have been a couple others, but I, yeah, but this one, no. I mean, like I said, it's been so loosely adapted over the years. Yeah. So, you know, you always take it, but it also, in and itself, it's like based on the short story, which is, it is a take on the Christmas Carol thing, mm-hmm. you know, where the, or at least the story is. I don't know if the, the short story uh, itself goes into this whole life story this human drama. No, it was it was pretty short. It was it was yeah. a short it was a short yeah. story, I think, and then it was written into like a 24 page, like treatment short story. And then from there it was <clears throat> originally meant as a vehicle for Cary Grant. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see, I don't, I don't know if he could handle the darker <clears throat> edges of, of this. And and it's interesting because James Stewart, you really don't think could either because he has got that just affable yeah. personality of, of he's so approachable, but that's, and that's, that's what tricks you in this film is because you think you're getting that you do, but over time, that's he right. Slowly, like degenerates into this bitter, cranky, and just just miserable person. But that and was yeah, that was the original. The original intent was a vehicle for Cary Grant, and then they they passed on, and then he did like the Bishop's Wife instead, which was kind of similar, not similar, similar, but you know, yeah, that, yeah. that holiday kind of thing, and you know, kind of happy ending stuff. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, this this is one that, like I said, it's it's if you don't want the standard Christmas fair like the Rudolph and the frosty and the ho, ho, ho. This is certainly not the ho, ho, ho. This is the, like the yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. It really is. It's kind of like, you know, like, like this is not something you're going to put on during your holiday party and people are going to get excited about. It's something you you sit down no. and watch for. A, a, it's a drama. It really is. It I mean, really is. It's a really, and it's it. a human drama and, and but very... it pays off. It's a lot. I mean, it, it's a slow roll to get to the end. Yeah. And and like you said, you like the end, you feel like the ending is so short, but that payoff is, it comes in a, in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they hit you. They, it comes so quick that you're, you're, you're actually, you're, I think your senses get assaulted 
And I think that's the way to handle it. Like, like it just kind of, here comes the money, here comes the people, here comes the telegraph. Here comes, oh yeah. I mean, if, you know, here comes all these, all this stuff, like this overwhelming wave overcomes him to kind of wash away all of his doubts and all of his anger. So every, even after everything that happened with Clarence, he would have been happy to go to jail. Like he came back yeah. and he would have been happy to go to jail. But instead there was this overwhelming wave of all the people that he did influence kind of show up at the end, you know, at, at, you know, with Mary, of course, kind of steering everything and saying, Hey, we need help. He's, he's, you know, like he would never ask for help. He's the guy that would never ask for help. So Mary had mm-hmm. to go to bat for him and say, listen, he, he's, you know, he's in big trouble. We need help. And then you see this overwhelming wave of love. So you kind of get that feeling that washes over you. Yeah. And that's good. That That's where you want to like, you want like you, you, you're really left emotionally at a high point. And I think that's, that's where you want You want to cut it off there. You know, he's got his family around him. He's yeah. he's, he's singing goofily <laughs> at the end. Um, yeah, and just kind of he's you know, deaf, yeah, he's, one ear, so he's know. yeah. So I think that that's the perfect way to leave to leave to leave that off is is get to that point. Oh, absolutely, no and, doubt. And, yeah. and kind of cut, and cut it loose from there. And there's not a dry eye in the place. I mean, you do, yeah. you 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 can't help it. I every time I I but there are other moments in the film. <laughs> Five minutes into the movie, I'm crying because when the when he's getting slapped by the yeah, you know yeah, by, by Mister Gower, tough scene. that's a it's a tough scene. Yeah, it's, they, it, show, they show they show like Mary like flinching, like you hear like the cack, like the slap, and, and, and she's she, like, crying and, and, she, like, and yeah, flinches. it's like oh yeah. man, come on man, it's crazy. And, you, and to think that this is no, this is considered a corny and a Christmas Christmas, film. Christmas movie is is not it's not don't accurate. show this to the kids. No, I don't think <laughs> it's accurate at all. I I in fact I you know I was. I wanted Jacob to see this movie because I wanted him to kind of get that. Yeah, I think it's because of the because, ending. I think because because the ending is kind of like yeah. everybody remembers the ending, yeah. and you you really forget the journey and how dark it is and how well, that's depressing the, well, it that's, gets. See, that's the thing. It's like the you know that's where you, that's the thing you always see in like other Christmas movies. You always show they're always watching it on TV. And yeah. it's always the very end. Oh, yeah. and everybody's Even the trailer, sick of the... if, if you go on Amazon Prime and you look at the trailer, they cut yeah. it. They they cut it like it's this happy film, like happy go lucky and people smiling, yeah. and, and they show like all the seed crowd scenes where everyone's happy or whatever. It's like no, that that's no, it, it deceives you're, you. You're, you're not advertise. You're not marketing the product as advertised. But that's what makes it great, though. You but go that, into it, it and, great. and you go into it, and you're you're getting something completely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that, that, well, that was the effect I had. I thought that that's exactly why I didn't want to watch it back when I was a kid, because I thought it was that kind of movie, like this yeah. sort of like, like sort of like the Bishop's wife or something like that. It's like, I don't, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, it's, it's okay. You know, it's like, but very lighthearted fair. And it's yeah. really not, no, it's not at all. I mean, it's just, it, it's very effective and it, it I don't know. I, it, yeah. I, I think it's great. So I think so too. Yeah, I, I, and everybody else does. So it's one of those. It, it is an evergreen title, mm-hmm. uh, but it is something different. So if you've if you if there's some chance you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life, and you're wondering about it, um, well, we'll 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 tell you. It's not it's not the ho ho Santa holiday movie. So yeah. if you're not looking for that, this is this is what is going to be probably fit the bill. If you're looking for a little something there, a little more sedate and serious, but yeah, with, there are with people... the redeeming quality at the end, this is going to be for you. Well, there are people who are commenting now, like, "Oh, do I, I? I didn't want to watch It's a Wonderful Life anymore. I'm sick of that movie." But because of the pandemic, you know, things happen, and like the people going real through a really tough time lately. This is the perfect movie to, to watch. And <laughs> you know, it's yeah. very cathartic. It's very, uh, it, it'll it'll give you something every time. Yeah. It, it, it does for me. So yeah, it gives you yeah. hope. It gives you it hope gives at you the end. That's what it, the, the message is: is hope at the end as well. So. In perspective, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't that's... take people for granted, you know, you know, you know, reach out, you know, you, you don't talk to somebody for a while, get in touch with that person, you right. know, like you're, you're friends with somebody you haven't spoken to a family member that you might be arguing with, you know, you watch this movie and it makes you want to reach out and, yeah. and just be <clears throat> absolutely. So it, it has that. It it's has a, that it's a kind of a little, it's a little bit of a, a gut check, a little reality check for you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like you said, in these times, it, it is very timely as well. So mm-hmm. um, that's going to do it. For It's a Wonderful Life, because it is a wonderful life. When you're listening to the 3324 podcast. Oh, how do you like that? That was a good one. <laughs> Dude, that's a, that rolled right off the top, I got, Yeah, I got to give myself I had to, I had to stop and give myself an attaboy for that one. I pat myself on the head, give myself a biscuit. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, check check us out on, on on Instagram and Facebook. We're at thirty three twenty four podcast. New episodes every week, and we've got little little quick bites called quick hits. Those come out every Monday, so you can check those out as well. Mm-hmm. Join us on on uh, YouTube and Facebook every other week for our live shows. And uh, I think on behalf of Eric, with his very festive blanket behind him on his couch, yes, uh, yes. we're going to wish you everybody, no matter what your faith, a happy holiday, happy safe and holiday season. Yes, for our uh, holiday themed uh, "It's a Wonderful Life" episode. So for Eric, this has been Dean, asking you to please be kind and rewind. You've been listening to the Thirty Three Twenty Four podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 